You've probably heard the phrase, wherever you go, there you are. But for most of us, that's not really the case. Wherever we go, there we aren't. We're always someplace else. Thinking how much better things would be over there. Or how much more interesting things are over there. And we very rarely look right here, right here in the heart. And yet this is where all the issues in life come from, what's going on in the heart right now. And meditation means being willing to look at what's right here, right now. And it really goes against the grain. We're much more interested in pointing the finger at something else. The problem is someplace else. The solution is someplace else. The mind is often like a politician who's very clever at when the fingers are being pointed at the politician, the politician diverts everybody's attention someplace over there. And of course, in doing that, whatever the actual problems are never gets solved. Even when we sit down to meditate, we're often more interested in what's over there. There's a story that John Mahabhava tells of a nun he encountered one time. Years earlier, the nun had encountered a John Mun. And after sizing her up, a John Mun told her not to meditate. She came and reported this to a John Mahabua, and the John Mahabua was perplexed, surprised, because usually a John Mun told everybody to meditate. But then he noticed what her meditation was like. She was very psychic, and she was always interested in what the devas were doing and what the beings of hell were doing, and that was where her interest lay. And she'd been told by many of Ajahn Mun students not to follow that kind of stuff, because, because it didn't go anywhere. It didn't solve the problem of suffering. It was like turning on your TV at night. And yet she'd never listened to these people. She hadn't even listened to Ajahn Mun. She kept on meditating. I like to have visions of devas here and devas there. Part of the problem was that in having that kind of knowledge, there was a fair amount of pride that developed around it as well. And it took someone of a John Mahabhava's caliber to finally get her to turn around and look inside her own mind to see that that's where the real problem was. But for most of us, our, our distractions aren't even that interesting. Just common, ordinary, garden variety distractions. Right here is no good, someplace else should be good. And these are just plain old everyday distractions, and yet they, they really have a pull. So you have to learn how to counteract them. And John Cha has a nice image for this. He says it's like you lost something right here. You know you lost it right here, and yet you go looking someplace else to find what you lost. That doesn't work. If you know you lost something right here, you have to look right here for it. So what's lost right here is our awareness of what we're doing, creating suffering right here. Clinging right here. Letting things totally out of control right here. And so in the beginning of the practice we have to learn how to look right here, even though we don't like what we see when we look right here. The mind is all over the place. Things are not as calm or as rapturous or as wonderful as we'd like. It's like a bad TV show. You want to change the channel to something that's more interesting. And yet that's the whole problem. We're always changing the channel. 
So a large part of the meditation is not just the technique of learning how to stay with the breath, but it's the attitude of reminding yourself that whatever comes up right here, right now, whether the technique is working right away or not, there's always something to learn right here. Because this is where the opportunity is. You're not going to see what's happening over there when you're standing right here. And if you maintain this habit of looking over there, then even when you do get over there, in other words, when over there becomes right here, you're going to be looking someplace else. Because what you see over there when you get there is going to be pretty much what you see right here, right now. So you have to learn how to watch it. Learn how to look at the mind in a way that actually helps solve the problem instead of compounding the problem. And part of it means bringing the right narrative to what you're doing. Learning to look at the events in the mind simply as events in and of themselves requires that you have a, the proper attitude. If you bring in the narrative of just being upset with yourself or down on yourself, that's not conducive to seeing things as they actually are. So you've got to have some appreciation for the fact that here you are, learning how to bring the mind under some control. And even when it's not as pleasant or as absorbing as you'd like all the time, at least you're engaged in something really worthwhile. And that in and of itself is something to congratulate yourself on. As the Buddha said, it's a sign of a wise person to willing to turn around and look at the mind as a first step towards bringing some control to the mind. And John Sawat tells of how when he first went to stay with a John Munn, he'd been meditating for a couple of years up to that point. But his mind was still not as settled as he'd liked it to be. And so he complained. It's one of the first things he said to a John Munn. He said, my mind is all over the place. And then John Munn said, well, at least you're aware that this is actually one of the things you learn in mindfulness practice, is learning how to watch a scattered mind, a distracted mind, or recognize it as a scattered mind, as a distracted mind. It's a step in the right direction. And John Sweat took the advice very well. He realized that John Munn was basically giving him encouragement. He wasn't saying that you just learn how to accept the distracted mind and not do anything with it, i.e. you're not practicing radical acceptance here. You're accepting the fact that this is the way things are right now, but you're learning about them so that you can begin to see where you can get a handle on them. And it's going to be awkward. It's, it's like learning a new language, going into a new situation where things are unfamiliar. Your immediate reaction is always, I want to go back to the language I've already mastered or to the situation I'm already familiar with. But you don't learn that way. You don't grow. You grow by putting yourself in a situation where it's awkward and you want to learn from it. And you have the right attitude, i.e., I'm going to learn from my mistakes. It's natural I'm going to learn, I'm going to have mistakes. It's natural that things are going to be difficult for a while. But this is a skill I really want to learn. When you bring that attitude towards being right here, that's, that's the proper narrative you should have. So many people approach meditation simply as a way to step out of their day to day narrative, rest for a while. But then when they step back in, they step back to the same old narrative. Nothing much gets changed, aside from the fact that they've rested for a while. What you really want to do is also change the narratives, the narratives that bring you into the meditation so you have the proper attitude toward whatever comes up, and the narratives that you engage in as you leave meditation that help you to integrate what you've learned while you're sitting here with your eyes closed into what you're doing in day-to-day -day life. And one of those narratives is that okay, you learn by watching whatever comes up, whether you like it or not.
because you lost it right here, so you're not going to find it over there. You lost your alertness, you lost whatever, your mindfulness, your concentration will pick it up right here. After all, this is where everything happens in life. This is where all the important decisions are being made, is right here, right now. So you can't let the pointing fingers right here, right now, who are pointing off to the right, off to the left. You can't let them distract you. Look at the fingers. That old koan about the, the Zen master saying, don't look at the finger pointing to the moon, look at the moon. Well, you better look at that finger, because maybe it's not really pointing to the moon. Examine the finger. See what its agendas are. Why is it distracting you, asking you to look someplace else? And if you can learn how to sit with these states of mind, after a while they'll open up. So remember, the solution isn't over there. The solution is right here, right here in the heart. An important part of the meditation is learning how to keep your gaze steady right here in the heart. Resist that constant temptation to look over there. So whenever that comes up, remind yourself, no, right here. The thought that once you look over there, that's something you've got to look at right here. When you see your way clear to be able to do this, okay, that's when things will change. That nun who finally was willing to submit the John Mahabo's instructions. She had later become known as an arahant. She didn't have much education, but when she finally realized that this, yes, this is where the problem is, it's right here, she was willing to turn around and focus on it and see clear through the problem. And that's the only place you're going to see through the problem is right here. So even though right here may not be the way you want it to be right now, it's the only place you can look where things eventually will be the way you want them. So don't let yourself get distracted. 